Hello, my name is Rebecca Gorvich and I'm a master's student in Photographic Preservation and Collections Management, a collaborative program between the University of Rochester and the George Eastman Museum in Rochester, New York. Today I am discussing a few of the photographs in the museum's latest history photography installation. My colleagues and I structured this exhibit to commemorate the centennial of the 19th Amendment's ratification, which granted many American women the right to vote. This installation examines how photography has portrayed and fundamentally shaped perceptions of women and feminist movements since the mid-1800s. The first photograph I'd like to talk about is a salted paper print titled New Haven Fishwives, including Mrs. Margaret Drybera Lyle, Marion Finley, and Mrs. Grace Finley Ramsey, and made by Scottish photographers David Octavius Hill and Robert Adamson, collectively known as Hill and Adamson. The duo produced this image in 1845, six years after the announcement of the invention of photography, making it the oldest photograph featured in the exhibit. At that time, Hill and Adamson shot a series of photographs of the New Haven fishing community in Edinburgh. The women of New Haven, shown here in their distinct style of dress, a memorable characteristic of these photographs, played an uncommon role at this time. The fishwives worked cooperatively with the fishermen, preparing the fish for market and managing the finances, and this dynamic fostered a more equal society than other more patriarchal societies at that time. The print is 5.5 by 7.5 inches and was made by exposing light-sensitive paper to sunlight, giving it its brownish tone. In early process, this image is unstable and prone to fading, therefore visitors must lift a curtain to view the photograph. This protects it from the gallery's lights. The photographs made by Hill and Adamson are considered to be some of the earliest documentary photographs, a mode that is well represented in this installation. Documentary photographer Margaret Burke White lays claim to a litany of firsts. Active in the field from the late 1920s to the late 1960s, Burke White was the first woman to photograph in a combat zone and the first female photographer hired at Life magazine her image gracing its first cover. That photograph, like others from her early career, focused on American industry, and she often photographed machinery from low angles, giving them a sense of magnitude and power. Beginning in 1930, Burke White made several trips to the Soviet Union to photograph scenes from Stalin's five-year plan for economic development, the first Western photographer to do so. Soviet officials were familiar with Burke White's photographs of American industry and admired the American work tempo, work culture, and productivity. Many Soviet factories were modeled after the Ford factories in the United States. This 20 by 14 inch black and white rotogravure print from 1932 is titled At the Lathe, Hammer and Sickle Factory, Moscow, and features a young female factory worker participating in the emerging economy. It is an intimate portrait of a worker with her machine. While in the USSR, Burke White photographed Stalin's mother in Georgia, who was unfamiliar with getting her picture taken and even unaware of where the United States was when Burke White mentioned her home country. The print is one, of, one image in a portfolio by Burke White titled Eyes on Russia, held at the George Eastman Museum. Like the rotogravure process used to print Burke White's photograph, the next image I am discussing is also produced by a photomechanical process. These are reproductions of photographs printed using ink and multiples can be made quickly and easily. An offset lithograph included in this exhibit is a 1970 wanted poster for Angela Davis, mass produced by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, who gifted this particular print to the museum. By that year, Davis was already a public figure as an outspoken college professor, fired and rehired due to her Communist Party ties and affiliation with the Black Panther Party. Davis's activism led her to work on the Soledad Brothers case, in which three African American men were accused of murdering a white guard in a California prison. Davis went into hiding after a courtroom shootout in which four people died, and she was charged with interstate flight, murder, and kidnapping for her alleged involvement. The 13 by 8.5 inch poster contains two images of Davis and convey the distinctive mugshot aesthetic universally recognizable. The text below the photographs elaborates on both Davis's descriptive features and alleged crimes. 
the use of photography to identify suspected criminals was widely embraced with the implementation of a standardized method of photographing, taking front-facing and side-facing views. This poster was widely distributed around the country, and the hunt for Davis resulted in numerous disturbances between Black communities and police. In response, posters in support of Davis were made. She was eventually captured, and at the trial, the jury found her not guilty. She has become an iconic advocate and activist in the modern movement for women's rights, civil rights, and prison reform. Other female activists are represented in the exhibit, including a photograph by Mexican photographer Antonio Wallace Turok. Turok was living in San Cristobal de las Casas, a colonial town in the Chiapas highlands of southern Mexico, on January 1, 1994, the day the Zapatista Army of National Liberation led an indigenous uprising. The Zapatistas were fighting for land re reformations and better working conditions, but the women in the movement developed their own platform, placing women's rights at the center. They called for an end to domestic violence and forced marriages, while advocating for education and better health care. Tarak's image, a 14 by 11 inch black and white gelatin silver print titled Mujer Zapatista or Zapatista Woman, was made in 1994. The way she holds the gun up to her masked face obscures her identity. She is unidentifiable, symbolizing a key Zapatista principle of collectivity. While many women are revered leaders in the movement, they are incognito and secretive. This serves in stark contrast to other photographs in the exhibition that emphasize a subject's individuality and that feature iconic leaders in the feminist movement, including images of Sojourner Truth, Susan B. Anthony, Gloria Steinem, and Angela Davis. Turok's photographs of the Zapatistas were acquired by the George Eastman Museum through a gift of the 50 Crows Foundation. 50 Crows appropriated responsibility of the Mother Jones International Fund for Documentary Photography, a project dedicated to funding long-term documentary projects from around the world. Through yearly grant competitions, the organization awarded thousands of dollars to photographers, and to fund these grants, they acquired the fine prints of well-known documentarians and photojournalists photojournal that they sold to members. In 2015, the museum acquired these prints, significantly adding to its documentary holdings. My master's essay centers on the Mother Jones International Fund for Documentary Photography Records, and for more information, check out the George Eastman Museum's website for my Focus 45 talk on the topic. Documentary photographer Stephanie Sinclair was awarded the 2004 grant, which at that point was distributed by the new 50 Crows International Fund for Documentary Photography, for her series Self-Immolation in Afghanistan, A Cry for Help. Sinclair's photography centers on issues of gender and women's rights around the world. Her most recognized body of work is Too Young to Wed, which documents forced and child marriage. This series, though, endures themes of self-immolation, or lighting oneself on fire, by women who can be seen as both acting in protest and surrender. The 9 and a quarter by 14 inch color inkjet print that is part of this exhibition features two Afghan women receiving treatment for burns they inflicted on themselves as an act of protest against abuse and oppression by men. In the mid-20th century, Afghanistan experienced a relaxation of laws that restricted women's rights, dress, and movement. However, the aftermath of the Soviet-Afghan War and the War on Terror and the subsequent rise of Taliban rule reversed many gains made by women. Women's rights and autonomy were at the mercy of political and cultural power struggles in the region. In response, these women have demonstrated that while female bodies are often police, they are often utilized by women to assert power. These five images demonstrate the ways in which photography can portray leaders and activists in the struggle for women's and human rights around the world. They depict the development of women in the workforce, albeit on the shore or in the factory, as well as examples of women putting their bodies on the line, demonstrated by photographs of protests in Mexico and Afghanistan. The Wanted poster reveals the utilitarian uses of the medium, serving in stark contrast to the established tradition of documentary photography. Thank you and enjoy the exhibition.